All right, we got our T38 on the table. That is a Hobby Master die cast, 170 second scale, beautiful black T38, seen before in tabletop reviews here in the show. The jet I flew was very similar to this one, same model actually, but it was painted in dark gray. That's because it was stationed in Minot, North Dakota, where I was, but the T-38s in that squadron were assigned to the B-52G squadron. So I'd go across the base. I was a young KC-135 pilot. The best plane ever designed. And I would go fly SAC, Strategic Air Command. Well, for a time it was, and it turned into ACC Air Combat Command, T-38s. And so the photos you see of me standing in front of those jets were the jets I flew. I sure wish I would have taken more photos. That's right, didn't really think about it at the time. Poor planning. Great plane though, super fun to fly. Uh, fun to know that my dad named it the Talon. Yeah, my dad named the T-38 the Talon. He was in the Air Force. He won an Air Force naming contest. I think I've shared that before. So the, kind of a cool tie-in. I felt like by flying the T-38, a supersonic trainer, the trainer version of the F-5, uh, less powerful, different motors than an F-5, but basically the same airframe. I felt like the circle was complete, and I really, really enjoyed it. I still have my T-38 G-suit. I still have my T-38 helmet, and who knows, maybe one day I go fly them again, or another jet, something uh, Russian would be fun, actually. Yeah, MiG-29 would be awesome. So uh, I'll keep my options open. If you own some of those, uh, get in contact with me and check me out. I'll go fly your jets. That'd be a fun TMP video. I got lots of great memories in the T-38. Uh, one of my fun memories, I may have shared this in Air Force Stories, I forget, is we were not a, a training plane. And there's a lot of culture in the Air Force. And if you're not in the Air Force, it's, it would take too long to explain it. But the people who are in uh, Air Training Command are a bunch of weenies. Generally speaking, I think that goes through all the branches, and they're just a bunch of douchebags. Uh, they don't really have a major weapon system like we did. I mean, the T-38 was not my main plane. The KC-135 was. That's an MWS. And so we really enjoyed flying down to Randolph Air Force Base in the day in our, not black, but dark gray T-38. And so my friend and I, like Muddy Waters was my buddy at the time, and he and I would trip all the way down from North Dakota, all the way to Texas, and we're like getting, you know, uh, practice approaches all along the way. We're getting training done. We end up in Randolph, and what we would do is do burner closed patterns. What does that mean? That means we would fly this plane super aggressive in the pattern, and they had T-38s, Air Training Command T-38s stationed at Randolph. They were painted white, and here they see this, not black, but Dark gray, this is close enough. Beautiful paint job, by the way. Just tearing it up in the pattern. So I'd pull the nose like almost straight vertical. And when I say burner pattern, that means I was stroking the afterburner the whole time. So you would see like leaps of flame coming out of the tail cones. And in the Air Training Command uh, culture, and according to their rules, that was verboten. You don't do that. And here I was just tearing it up, me and Muddy. So we'd pull up. And then actually when I rolled on a downwind, and you pilots know what I'm talking about. I can't explain too much. I'll take up too much time. Uh, I'd roll on a downwind. And so I would actually go inverted. And then I would kind of come like this. And then sometimes to roll, I would do a complete roll and then roll out on downwind. So we do like, uh, I don't know, maybe about seven close patterns till our fuel is short, especially in burner. We're burning a lot more gas. And so we put the gear down, uh, we do a visual approach, and we land. And so we're taxiing in, Muddy and I are in the, the cockpit, and uh, I was in the front on that one time I was doing it, he was riding in the back. So I was playing aircraft commander. We taxi in, canopies open, and we're met by this contingent of AETC weenies uh, trying to uh, chastise us for flying that way. And so they get out and they come up to us, and we're standing by there, you know, filling out the 781, our forms. Uh, it's a logbook for the aircraft. And sorry again if this is jargon. i got to move fast for time. And they say, hey, yeah, uh, we saw those closed patterns you're doing, and uh, that's awfully aggressive. You know that's uh, not according to our AETC rules. And remember, we're not in AETC. Even though we are, I think at that time as a first lieutenant, we have 
air mobility command patches on so we do not fall under their command structure and i just i just said hey dude what's this patch say and they're like well amc i was like that's right we're not part of your weenie aetc program down here so we're flying according to our regulations for this aircraft which we were and there's nothing that constrains us not to fly that way well that wasn't technically true but as far as i knew it was i mean in our regulation they didn't want us doing like afterburner patterns <laughs> we were kind of pushing it a little bit but damn son you're only young once you're only in a fighter plane once you gotta live i do it all over again all over again. So the program I was in was called Accelerated Co-Pilot Enrichment. It was designed to give young co-pilots like myself aviation experience, advanced hours, uh, instrument flying experience, formation flying experience, all translating to your MWS because it was part of Strategic Air Command, which at the time didn't fly that frequently. They eventually got rid of the T-38s and uh, I enjoyed my time in it. I got uh, several hundred hours of flight time in it. So good good times, good story. And uh, in a miraculous uh, uh, streak of good planning, I remembered the ACE patch for this. Here we go to the knife review. ACE Iona review. Here's the blue version, aluminum handled version. Also called the ACE. What a nice tie-in. T-38 Ace, Ace, yeah, buddy, hey, buddy. I, I bet a lot of people just heard that story and they're like, yeah, give me another one, give me another one. I, I need to do some more. I think I share, shared a lot in Air Force stories. Um, go watch those and they're pretty funny. This is a good time. So I like the name, obviously, not because I was in the Ace program, that's not why. It's just a cool, easy to remember name. So it's a Vox Anso Ace Iona. This is a liner lock version. So it's a 2.9 inch blade and the steel is fantastic. M390, that will be reflected in the price of each of these versions. And believe it or not, I have three versions. They're on loan from Blade HQ. Thank you, Jake. I've got to take care of them. If I decide to purchase them, I will. Uh, I'm leaning towards doing so, at least one of them as a cast member. Now, M390 is a great steel. I'll flash somewhere in the review its composition, what it's capable of. It's well known in the knife community, very well respected. I want to show you one thing, and I've talked about this a lot in my KRVs, and this knife really exemplifies it very clearly. Look at the finishing on this knife. The Giant Mouse, by the way, that's the brand, Giant Mouse. There you go, Giant Mouse. First of their uh, brand I think I've reviewed actually so I don't remember reviewing another one so here we go getting it done look at the finish on it how beautiful that is so it's kind of a between polished and satin but look at how beautiful that is and how how refined the striations are and don't take what I'm getting ready to say in the wrong way I love love spider co but uh, sometimes Spyderco on their Taiwanese blades has some very distinct vertical striations. This is, as you can see, a Sage 5 FRN. Conveniently labeled. There you go, a great knife. Watch for TD and I's review on this knife. Buy them while you can, they're fantastic. That's a really good steal on this too, by the way, S30 on this Sage and compression lock too. But compared, uh, you know, it's just a little bit more refined even on the Ace. Kind of surprising, so I, I don't know. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but when you're looking at it with your eyes, you can really tell this is less refined, more refined. Yeah, and by the way, these two knives are the same price. This is an FRN version of a Sage. I love the Sage, love it. I mean, the jimping, so perfect. The blade shape, super lightweight as you saw. And what's not to like about a compression lock? It's just so awesome. Just an interesting observation. Not really in the same family of knives. So we've got dual thumb studs on here, no volcano issues. I don't see them as being uh, easily removable. They might be, let me look in there. I think that is a micro torx in there. I did not try to take it apart. Uh, yeah, it is. So you could remove the thumb studs. You have a short flat right here for your EPA for a consistent angle sharpener. The edge of this M390 Ace Iona is just super, super sharp. Man, I love that edge, it's so good. Just, I'm really impressed with the blade shape. The, the length of the blade is perfect for EDC. The finishing is perfect. This knife, guys, is hitting on all cylinders for the most part. This version is a captured liner lock. 
So we have 6,000 series aluminum. This one coated in blue. Uh, good luck finding these because they do sell very quickly from Blade HQ and I I don't know when they'll get it and if I can't, I always want to give a BHQ link for the knives because they're so pro 2A. So I like supporting them. Uh, but if it comes down to it, if you guys are looking, I'll give an affiliate link to Amazon. So I do that once in a while. Maybe it's over there. I didn't even look prior to the review. Single sided adjustment on the pivot screw. And we've got some phosphor bronze bushings in there. There's your stop pin. There's a look at a wise decision, and that is you're going to have stainless steel on this side. You can see it non skeletonized. And then this is just pure aluminum in this version. And then you have your standoffs. And you can see made in Italy in there somewhere. See that right there? Pretty cool. M390, a very high end, well, not the highest end, but a pretty high end uh, European steel. Nice curvature in hand, real comfortable. This is a really good EDC knife. I said it's hitting on almost all cylinders. You know what I'm going to say here? Do I need to say it? Okay, I'll just leave it. Jimping. I wish it was jimped. I, I, I haven't changed. I'm consistent. Now, I used to have some Kershaw that had the same bend, and I... I don't know if I sent it off to a TMP Patreon member. I give knives away all the time. Become uh, a donor. Maybe you'll get lucky sometime. Uh, I just do it kind of randomly. Mrs. Nothing Fancy helps me out. But it reminded me of that knife. This one is a lot better, and I really love its clip. It's a, a tension wire clip, deep carry. They're really my favorite, and I say that about the Spideys, right? I've been raving about Spidey clips like this forever. That's what I put on my special edition Dragonfly. Speaking of Spyderco, this one having a bit of wear and tear on it at this point. This is the TMP version Spyderco Dragonfly. Oh, dudes, that's sick. Uh, stay tuned. Maybe we'll do some more special edition Spydercos. Be ready to do pounce because they sell so quickly. But there's that clip. Love it. Love it. So great clip. Really comfortable in hand. No hot spots. There's no lanyard hole, but I don't really care because this is such a small knife. This one did come out in some other colors. I think I saw orange, gray, um, and some other colors. This this or orange would be my favorite in this version of it. And the lockup, of course, is fantastic. There's your centering of the giant mouse, Ace Iona. Speed is fantastic, comes out very quickly. I'll show you a couple competitive offerings, but Honestly, in inventory right now, I don't have too many that are solid aluminum handled like that. Another reason I'm thinking about, wow, I might need to put some of those in there. Most of, my, most of mine are captured liner locks with G10 scales. Speaking of which, here comes just such a version. This is the milled Ace Iona. So it, this one's going to be an orange G10. Get ready to get excited because it has those Flintstone Vox or Anzo texturing on it. Look at that. Look how cool that is. Man, that's cool. Same blade. This one has a little bit different finishing on it. So I think it's more of a stonewash finish on this variation, which I don't mind at all. Between the two, I like that one just a little bit better. I just like how classy that presents. Same clip. You're going to have much better traction with these G10 vari variations of the Ace Iona. Yeah, they're going to be, a, I think, about the same width. If you look at them, they're very narrow and easy to carry. Super lightweight. They're only like 2.6 ounces, these Ace Ionas. Super lightweight, easy to carry. The, really, the only miss is that we don't have gimping on the top side. Look at how clean that is. And notice on this one too, they didn't put a steel liner on this offside, the non-liner lock side. Well played, Giant Mouse. There's your timing. Pretty early on this one. And it'll wear in nicely. And here comes a blue variation of the Giant Mouse uh, Ace Iona. So it's just like that orange, but TMP blue. Look at that. Oh, dude. That's pretty. Pretty, pretty. Nice markings on the blade there. Dual thumb studs. Super lightweight. I just, I really like these knives a lot. 
obviously the philosophy of use would be EDC blades, like hands down EDC blades. That's, that's what they're about. Competitive offerings. Again, I don't have any exactly like this, but seeing as how we do have some Iona's that are in uh, Flintstone, I call it Flintstone because like, you know, the caveman style milling on the G10, which I've always liked. It provides traction. It's very visually interesting. I'm going to remind you of how awesome the Civivi Elementum is. Three ounces, D2, about 50 bucks. Same quality on the blade. So made in Italy, made in China. Uh, we Knives Division, Civivi is, and you cannot fault their quality. The Elementum is fantastic. This one is in a beautiful purple hued blue i really don't know if the camera's picking that up like uh if i look at these two colors in real life this one looks like a kind of a sky blue and this one is a purple blue and this one looks like a darker slate blue you might be able to detect that in the camera i'm looking at the viewfinder it kind of picks it up i love this knife really good deep carry clip it's a flipper design no hot spots, and then we have that beautiful jimping on the back. Oh my gosh, super lightweight. And there's your lanyard hole, if you want one. Deep carry, the Civivi Elementum is just fantastic. A lot of cool different colors. This one is discontinued, it's long gone, and I just looked it up online. It's the Kershaw Hype 1684, and dudes, these are trading at 100 bucks now. And I told you at the time when I reviewed it in 2016, I was like, jump on this knife, it's a really cool knife. I, I, I didn't have really anything negative to say about the knife. So hopefully you got one. A 1684 Hype is such a great knife. And it's aluminum like this. So I was lucky to find this in the collection. Deep carry Kershaw clip. Pitch black variation here. Beautiful. Good jimping on the top. I just love this knife. And at the time it was affordable. It actually matches our T38 perfectly. That would have been a, a sick flight suit knife. Break out your Hype. Your hype in the day. What else do I have? Uh, this one is a little bit different. It's a Kershaw Mini Natrix, two ounces, eight CRs of steel, 30 bucks. I just love the Natrix, speaking of Kershaw. It's just a cool knife. It's just cool. Uh, not as quick to deploy because it has like a deployment slot here. Uh, go watch my review on it. I don't know if it'll be posted by the time I post this one. It's really hard to get all the content out while these affiliate links are still live. Short, really compact, deep carry clip. I really like that. And it's just a good looking knife. Really good looking knife. And I uh, I have a, a whole video coming out on that whole series. And it's inspiration, which I think you'll love. Last but not least is the Kershaw. Here we go with Kershaw again. This is an aluminum frame knife, 4.2 ounces, the dash. I've shown it multiple times. It's very similar to the hype. This one right here, very similar. It's just uh, a little bit bigger. Lines are a little bit different, and I really love that red version with a Kraton insert in it. The clips are the same. They're speed assisted. Notice the flipper design's different. I didn't see if this one's trading higher. So the number on this is a 1688. There you go. Couple, couple competitive offerings. Uh, knife Show, alive and well. Thanks to our donation community. Thank you so much. Uh, I have so many great knives I want to review and post for you. Some will be folders. I have a few fixed plates I'm going to show you. Stay uh, a long-term uh, donor. Right now I'm using Patreon. You'll see them break there first. And uh, good luck getting these knives. These ones, by the way, the Ace Iona, big thumbs up from Nothing Fancy. Get them while you can. The colors are going to sell down, and I don't know if they're coming back. That's a problem we're seeing with all these knives, just like the hype. They're there for a short period of time. And then they're gone forever. Thanks so much. We'll see you.